Welcome back everybody to Forza Motorsport 7, so we're continuing on with the Historic Road Racing uh, Championship and uh, yeah, this is the second of four races. I have reverted this uh, Mustang back to its stock form, because like I said in the previous episode I prefer cars in stock formats because uh, cars when they're upgraded do come across a bit too similar for me, so uh, yeah, we're going to keep it in stock form. Uh, we've got some mods that we can attach uh, to do this, so uh, yeah, we'll attach a few. Just so we can get a bit more money, a bit more XP, etc. Right, so let's get going. Oh, for God's sake. Fine. Well, looks like you can't race cars stop form. That's annoying. I could do that in previous Forza Motorsport career modes. But, unfortunately, I can't do it here. Well, it's not entirely uh, a bad thing, I guess. But, it is a little bit annoying. Right, so, it's very stormy here in Virginia. Bumping and scraping there, but nothing major. Transam unnecessarily breaking at that point there. I will be raising the difficulty as we progress through uh, this uh, career mode, just to keep it fresh, because obviously I'm doing a little bit better than uh, I'd expect for a f know, on this second race on this career mode. I have been buying cars as well because I got the uh, bonus credits that you get through the Forza Hub. So that's why, uh, if you see my uh, collection rating or whatever it's called, uh, so you can buy certain tier vehicles, it's higher than it was before. I think I'm on tier 3 at the moment. But that's just because I enjoy uh, buying cars, trying them out, seeing how they handle, how they drive. Oh dear, bit of understeer there. Car view, see what this uh, car like to drive inside. I will at times switch between being in the third person and in the first person. Because I do like being in either kind of view. Usually depends on where I am in the uh, grid, really. If I'm up front like I am now, I'll prefer to do this. But if I'm trying to get past other people, then I'll uh, go on the outside view. And now it's starting to rain. So the dynamics of the track are going to change. Slippy there. Whoa. And then 
towards the rear end there. I do like how uh, quickly the dynamics of the track change when it starts raining. reason why I would like prefer to drive stock outside of the uh, familiarity of having the same kind of upgrades on vehicles is it'd be fun to drive them stock in these kind of conditions. There we go. Pretty easy race there. But then again it is only the second proper race in the career mode so far. So I don't expect it to be too difficult but I may well upgrade the uh, difficulty settings on the uh, driver tars. play just so I can uh, learn from it myself. Uh, let's call it for the one. Right, so let's move on to the next race. Hopefully it offers a bit more of a challenge this time round. As you can see, the mods gave me a lot of money there. 11 grand from the earnings themselves, Dravatar difficulty, and then the mods themselves were more than both of those two things combined. And we're now up to level 4. And we can choose between a uh, Holden race car, Pro Driver Blue, Blue uh, thingy, or 40 grand. I think I'll go for the money, thank you. Next upgrade, we uh, uh, next time we level up, we can get 40 grand or a Nissan GTR or a uh, of a suit. Right. Looks like you got some credits to spend. Hey, why not invest in a prize crate? You might get mods, driver gear, or something else great. I'm fine. So it looks like we can keep this uh, VIP for another four times. So. Uh, it on again. In fact, we can use it. We can use the same mod more than once, it seems. That's good. Um, we'll uh, get that. Right. So, Road Atlanta full. Let's get going. If you'll let us. Come on. Oh, actually, uh, uh, Drive Atar difficulty, like I said. Let's put it on highly skilled. Just wait for it to load. Let's go. Looks like it's going to go night time part way through this race because it is quite uh, lacking in sunlight. A lot of these cars in this grid are some of my favourites, so one reason why I uh, chose this uh, championship first. 
really do that by muscle cars. Though it is a shame that there are some more muscle cars that have been added from previous Forza games. I know we've got the fourth Fairlane Thunderbolt and the uh, Coronet 0023, but I would have liked the uh, original Firebird, not the Trans Am version, just the Firebird version. The uh, Ford Mustang Boss 429, I think it's called. I would have liked that as well. That was one of my favourites in Forza Motorsport 4. I think they're the only two that are mainly missing. Camaro Z28 from the 60s would have been nice as well to go along with the Super Sport. It's a whole different beast compared to the SS version. draft in there helped us. Come on, beat the javelin. There we go. Right, got a cougar up front, and then we got a cuda. And Daytona and Charger, I think, is it? Yeah. These are basically the three big brutes of the muscle car era from the late 60s, early 70s. Imagine this Daytona will have the uh, advantage on this straight because they were already high top speed vehicles in the first place, never mind with upgrades. Maybe not. Even outpacing the Charger. expecting it to get dark because it looked like it was uh, getting towards dusk, but I guess not. I don't know why the exhaust is doing that wobbly thing. to be honest. But yeah, Road Atlanta, especially in this configuration, is one of my favourite tracks on any Forza game, quite frankly, so I'm glad it is at least on this one as well. These cars are quite thirsty as you can see. Not as thirsty as I would have expected. One thing I have noticed between individual vehicles when doing a bit of testing is that fuel consumption is a uh, is different between vehicles. I tried out uh, the Audi Q7, uh, you know, V12 massive diesel vehicle, 
and I use less fuel in that than I did in a uh, smaller engined car, but nonetheless pretty powerful. So uh, yeah, pretty decent on that front. Not something I expected them to put in their game, quite frankly. But yeah, there we go. Right, let's move on to the final race in this series. Uh, I just actually want to save the replay. I just, I just like you know, looking at what I've uh, done in a race and trying to analyse it myself. Right, next and final race. Should get a load of money out of that one. Nice. One thing I have noticed about this is that there is a lot more, uh, not a lot more, a lot better pricing on a lot of the cars. I've seen certain cars on this game that are around 200,000 credits. Now you've brought the finesse and the fury so far. Now finish strong and show everyone who will be taking home the Forza Drivers Cup. So yeah, like I was saying, there's been certain cars that have been around 200,000 credits on this game whereas in say Forza Horizon 3 they were more like 2, 3 million so yeah I'm really glad that you know they've sorted out the pricing made it a lot better and even though I don't really agree with the uh, price crates or loot boxes because quite frankly it just looks like something that's going to start bringing in microtransactions which I hate at least it gives you something to spend your money on because a lot of the time you end up having a lot of money and nothing to spend it on so I'm glad that they've at least given us something to spend on but hopefully it doesn't turn into a microtransaction hellhole alright let's get going Watch it, Stingray, why are you breaking all straight? Silly boy. AI seems a big of a uh, a big improvement over previous Forza games as well. Personally, I think they're a bit more daring. But we'll obviously see them at their peak when we eventually get put the driver's guitar difficulty up to the uh, top level as we progress through the career of the campaign. do however still break unnecessarily hard on corners like that. That is something they haven't got down yet. But progress is progress. Still would have preferred to be allowed to drive stock cars though. I was able to do that in previous games, so it just seems a bit restrictive not being able to do it in this one.
I'm looking forward to the uh, car parts that are going to be coming out as well. Hopefully they've got some uh, pretty unique cars in the lineup. Plus obviously we've got Forza Fun events that will come around soon as well. Which will hopefully mean big prizes, plenty of uh, nice cars to try out as well, like there was in Forza Horizon 3, because obviously we don't have barn finds in this game like we did in that game, so hopefully the Forza Fun events will uh, make up for that. I am a bit ambiguous to this speciality dealer though, where uh, uh, free cars come available for a couple of weeks thereabouts and that's the only place you can buy them outside probably the auction house that is a little annoying that is a, again a bit restrictive because there are several cars that I want to try out on this game that are in that special speciality dealer and yeah the idea of waiting for cars that you know are full well in the game is annoying But don't get me wrong, I'm not coming down on this car, on this game hard. It's a really solid game and uh, again, shows improvement in the series over the previous one. I just wish it was a, you know, a giant leap rather than a, uh, a few steps forward. Kinda trounced them this time around again. Maybe we need to put the difficulty up a bit more at some point. But there we go. I really shouldn't expect the first, you know, part of the game to be all that difficult, quite frankly. I'm sure it will be later on in the series when we're driving all those uh, race cars and etc. Right, let's just save this. Continue. See how much money we get for that. Seems like this game is pretty easy to earn money on, which is also a good thing because I spend a lot of money on uh, getting cars. Series and you grabbed a spot on the podium. Fantastic work. So you can tackle the next challenge for the Forza Drivers Cup after you're done basking in your victory. Got no time for basking, mate. Nice. I'm um, nearly level uh, 5, so that's good. Let's see what we can do next. Showcases are the only place to get special, rare, and unique cars. Now these rides will definitely improve your collection score. See so yeah, again, 
can only own these in a certain way. So the Polaris R's at R, open wheel on oh, all no, these aren't these uh showcases, yeah. Or are these showcase is that a showcase? No idea. Definitely know this is, so let's uh Carbon try this out. Proof a car can make anything better. Instead of rolling a ball down a lane to hit some pins, you'll be the ball. Racing the knockdown pins set up for you along the track. It's a perfect way to practice drifting and sliding. Yeah, well, it'd be easy to drift or slide a car when it's rear wheel drive. These limos aren't. Now, bowling They're with only a car front. Is something I'm pretty good at for two reasons. Number one, I've done a lot of dumb stuff in a car in my life. Number two, I took bowling as a class in college. The whole idea is just like when you see a professional bowler. It's all about the spin. You got to get in there and you got to make that car as wide as possible. Think about it from a style point, but also the harder you hit that pin, the harder it hits other pins. You can take co uh, classes in college for bowling. Guess that's an American thing. So they won't see that over here in the UK, I don't think. So in a big, heavy front wheel drive limo, with not all that much power. Wide as possible. <laughs> Probably should have gone for the right hand side one there. There we go. Just about did it with 4,000 to spare. So yeah, we have we've had bowling before in previous games. It's nothing new, but they are somewhat fun and ca and can be a challenge when they're uh, a lot more difficult. But then again, driving a limo is hardly a uh, easy thing now, is it? Don't get much money out of it as you can see. Though I should have put mods on, maybe that would have helped a little bit, but I doubt it would have increased our load a, lo a lot on that one. So yeah, let's see what we're going to be doing in the next episode. And then we'll uh, end it there. Showcases will be unlocked as you race. Now. It's your call what to drive next. So we've got a choice between high speed chase, Audi RS models, Audi models something, hot hatch racing, trophy truck racing, RZR spec. We can do a Jim Carner focus. So what? Uh, yeah, we've got plenty to choose. We can do the seeker open. In open racing, you can choose any car you want. And go up against other drivers who will be using cars from the same division. Makes for high attention, ferocious racing, and not in a bad way to spend an afternoon here. Maybe we'll do that so we can choose something of our own because I have bought a few cars uh, in between episodes. Nonetheless, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed this, and I highly recommend getting this game if you haven't already. So, yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.